recorder is starting now. I'm gonna start the stream. And uh it'll be an intro sequence, and I'm gonna hit the starting soon thing. The starting soon has got us muted, but we'll be able to hear each other. So it's just not gonna be recording okay. on there. So um but, uh, just give me the cue when it's like Oh yeah, don't worry. We'll 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 be chit chatting away while uh while it's going anyway. Okay. So hang on a second here.
Hello, we are live, and I don't know what the hell I'm looking at there. That's not the uh, that's not the uh, background I was looking for, but uh, uh, we have here FYGPs back with me. I'm all right, man. Just playing with OBS, and uh, it seems to be screwing me around here. How you doing? Oh wait, oh there you are. Pretty good. So I mean. Uh, early in the morning here. I guess it's in the night so where you're at. Right? It's uh, what is it here? It's uh, it's about ten twenty here in the uh, west side of the Can uh, the Canada. Yeah, I, early. it's oh, it's 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 early in the night, yeah. That's not early, that early, because people get up at five if they have a job, but Talk the largest on numbers. Really? <laughs> and, and, and look at me, yeah. and I'm so unprepared that I don't even know which goddamn uh, screen I have. Uh, the, 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 I had it. I did have it. I did have it. We just, I think it's this one. There it goes. Oh, that's not it. Is it this one? Nope, it's not that one. Jesus crying out loud. Can't do anything right, Robert. But anyway, everybody is listening. This is Robert J. Morris, and uh, we've got FYGP here on the microphone as well. And uh, he's out in uh, Switzerland uh, on the other side of the planet, approximately uh, eight hours ahead of the west coast of Canada here. I'm in British Columbia, and uh, we're on Pacific time specifically. Um, man, what crazy, crazy, crazy news, uh, going on, uh, these days. Um, that's just incredible. And like, um, immediately, like, I uh, was thinking when I saw the thing, the thing unfolding, basically just after the, uh, the video came out, that this was going to be, um, Rodney King, maybe that level. This Even is, more. uh, it's definitely on that level, but you know, I think. I mean, I got my own reservations about this, which uh, we kind of talked about um, uh, off mic. But, like, it was, I don't know, man. I think people, I think the sensibilities of the people are, I think, a little bit too good to let that happen again. And I know that uh, the the footage would make people believe otherwise. But, again, we're talking about provocateurs and other things and who knows maybe you know going back going back now to rodney king um how do we know now like knowing what we know uh how do we know that they that, that wasn't also provoked by similar uh you know functions of uh certain uh dregs of our society you know what i mean like uh, george soros <clears throat> yeah i know what you're saying that's uh, entirely possible, and I mean, you have seen it, for example, with the Ferguson riots. Uh, yeah, going back to that, uh, when Mike Brown was was shot, a police officer, and uh, you know, it's uh, what I find also weird is that like nobody ever makes it about just uh, police violence, police brutality in general. Yeah, they always make it about race. So then, yeah. in the end, it's like divide and conquer psyop so when you have like people burning down their city pretty much well mm -hmm. you know, many come out of town and are agent provocateurs as you're saying so like not really but um you know the the neighborhood businesses are getting burnt down and yeah. then the people see <laughs> you know you're supposed to represent you hurt them when you're you're doing the burning and the looting and everything and well, it's well, exactly yeah. I, I i can see something like this but not like this like that like i mean but again i wasn't there i mean we only saw in canada anyway like as far as the rodney king riots were concerned we only saw what the news showed us so we really didn't have an actual you know boots on the ground impression of what was happening you know to be fair um and and and, and in saying that, um, like, I don't know, man, I, I, I begin to question 
it, it's it's not like it just started like five years ago. Like this this you know, like some of the stuff that we're gonna get into tonight. It's not like it just started five years ago. Like I mean, some of this stuff has been going on for a couple hundred years, really. If you want to really really get technically serious about it, um, uh, you know, I mean, I I always looked at uh, uh. The rationale behind the decision being made to uh, go over the pond, you know, like when 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 they when they decided to come over here and emigrate, I mean, you couldn't go and just fine and say that you know Europe was overpopulated at that time in history. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't like that. And if they were trying to find a new place, sure, that's fantastic. But what were the motivations behind it? You know, and if you could just get inside the minds of the people that, uh, you know, brought that first flotilla. And I'm not talking about Christopher Columbus. So I'm talking about the people who populated North America and uh, came over here for the express reason for, you know, finding a new home. Like, Usually, if you like where you're living, you don't leave. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. Like, it, it's it's all speculation. It, it, but it's just, I would like to get inside the minds of the people that actually made that that move, that, you know, that embarked on that journey, I guess you could say. You know, it's no, it's no different, by the way. It's no different than uh, us, you know, uh, making that journey to other planets and shit, I suppose. I mean, maybe that's the rationale. It would just be interesting, you know, to... Uh, to, to kind of get a, you know, a, a first-person perspective on it. What do you think? Yeah, just kind of an explorer spirit, right? Yeah. Well, if that's what it was. I mean, you know, uh, I will say, like, they came over here, and the Brits and the French all had a hard-on for what they were doing. Was it was it a race, or was it a story? Like, you know... Is that how uh, things are going to turn out when we start doing, like, you know, moon mining? And, uh, you know, is, it, is, is that what's going to happen? When we start uh, making, uh, you know, buildings that are regolith on Mars? You know, that kind of thing. Like, I mean, I, if we are going to repeat history, we're going to repeat history. It's just that's in our nature. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. I think we are still far away from anything like that i would love to see us go you know explore other planets but but now we are too uh caught up with a system that is trying to put everybody into debt everybody into debt slavery absolutely and, uh, basically yeah. you know uh, create divide and conquer wherever they see fit mm, lack of a better term like this is all of this is about so well lot of it is about and uh like you know uh since maybe you know, we are just destined to be ruled by psychopaths because uh, like actually when you look at like the degrees of like of pathy or sociopathy and uh, like uh high up circles it's it's more than an average society there's studies that have been done about that right like oftentimes you would see the most ruthless like it's a it's a, like similar to a to a mafia so you, you would like see the most ruthless guy climb up up uh and be the the hat honcho right well um i mean i it, it it's I mean, compared to what it would be like to let's see to be in the seventeen hundreds or the eighteen hundreds i mean it was far more dangerous in a human lifespan. Like the mortality rate was way, 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 way higher. You know what I mean? Like it was, um, yeah, I mean, but I'm not comparable. You would die from, <laughs> it, I mean, basically. yeah, you, I mean, you, you get bit by a dog, you get bit by a dog and you die of sepsis like that day at the age of like 25, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, but yeah, was, if you're lucky, but I mean, and ironically though, we live in an age where you're kind of, kept alive a lot longer and this is going to seem odd to anybody listening to this but you're kept alive a lot longer however you're sicker and constantly need medical treatment like this is the thing that i like they've made a business out of treating people that's true i mean you see the, right now with the 
healthcare system and all of the scandemic that has been going on. Yeah, yeah the scandemic, yeah. Scandemic, yeah, exactly. Well, scanning everybody. And, like, uh, obviously, they uh, can now collect, like, with the contact tracing, they can look at people's care records. Well, this is a funny thing because I've just been made aware on on the OS, on the operating system level, uh, uh, Mac OS on, and iPhone OS have all updated their uh, their core kernels uh, to basically carry out the uh, the the program function. Now, here's the thing that I like. I, I guess wait. Well, I don't know, man. I, it's not like it just ha it started yesterday. I guess this has been going on since what? I, I guess the the news first started creeping out around uh, late October, November. I guess the COVID. Yeah, yeah. That's when um, the, that's when the first cases started to pop up, and that's when they first started coming out of. I think that's when it, when the news was leaking out of China. That that's before it kind of really became a thing. And uh, exactly. Yeah, but I mean. Okay, so it's been a lot of months. Okay, so I, I'm going to take back what I was about to say, but I'll say what I was about to say anyway, even though it's not necessarily valid. But it does take a long time to develop software, integrate it into a kernel, test it, and then release it to the mass public. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's a, there's a development process and time, like, like for 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 program, uh, you know, creation and deployment. It, it's it's just, it's just, it can't work any other way. I mean, you can't just go, oh, I'll just whip up a program and send it out. It would have to have been written already is what I'm trying to get at. But it might not apply in this case because they have had a lot of time to roll it out and, and maybe test it. So I, I do take that back. But people have to be aware of these things too because um, I'll give you a good example. Um, the, the, remember the Paris attacks? Uh, yes, yes, of course. Well, I mean... It was the next day, and they had an entire website, the main name registered. They had, a, they had, a, they had, uh, you know, credit card uh, payment system uh, to buy the T-shirts. Well, those T-shirts had uh, designs that had to be printed, put on T-shirts. They had to be shipped and stocked so that they could be shipped out. I mean, they exactly. had the entire kit caboodle already in order within days. Like, it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that work like that it doesn't like work like that maybe in, uh, you know rainbow rainbow unicorn land does i don't care how much money you have like i don't care how much money you have you're not going to put together that kind of that, that kind of campaign that quickly you know no what i mean way. no way i mean t-shirts i mean need to be pr uh, printed in mass right they need to be available and yeah it's like you expect a lot of people to come there and like show their support right yeah <laughs> But I mean, I mean, that's just another thing. But uh, yeah, no, the uh, state of affairs with the riots, like um, uh, going back to what we were saying, it's like during all of this, like, OK, first, first, it was bad enough that the like going back to, to October, you know, October, November, just the thought, just the idea that there's a rampant virus out there somewhere that could potentially come here. You know, I mean, that's a scary thought for anybody. I mean, but I mean, it, it happens almost every other year. I mean, we had uh, going back, I think it was early 2000s, we had SARS, and then it was the H1N1 and the swine flu, then the avian flu, and then we had uh, uh, Ebola did its little thing. And actually, I think yeah, Ebola, yeah. Ebola was first. We had Ebola 2.0 that came back, and then it was Zika, uh, <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, the Ebola 2.0. Uh, uh, like, remember that sick guy uh, from? He was in uh, Africa. I'm not sure if it was Zaire or not, but it was Africa anyway. He was sick. Uh, an American guy, a doctor, and instead of sending what he needed there, they shipped him back here. Like, no. Again, I repeat, that's not how it works. When <laughs> you don't move a potentially in, 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 infect infectious person you know what i mean like back to yeah, yeah, you, you know. don't you don't do that it's, it's, that's the exact opposite of quarantine like that's it's actually ebola yeah ebola sounds way worse than ebola is way worse you're gonna start bleeding out of every uh every orifice of your body and, and even your pores it's just you start turning in like it's you know you start turning into soup you know exactly. it, it's ridiculous like 
Why? Why? And you saw, I mean, wow. I mean, we exposed it. The, uh, you know, you had, you had uh, completely un, un, I guess you could say unequipped, ill-equipped, ill-equipped. Yeah. yeah. You had very yeah, ill-equipped uh, bystanders like the police that had no hazmat suits, no, no breathers, no nothing. And they roll that dude out, out of the van, like on a gurney that had absolutely no, like it, it had a, the coverings, like the plastic, uh, you know, the she thing, like he was a boy in a bubble kind of thing. But it was just like, it wasn't hooked up to anything. Like, what is he like suffocating? Like, I don't know. It was just ridiculous. The whole thing was just staged to look like somebody was doing something. But that cop there, yeah, like, there was, there was, there was he like, a lot of going on. Oh, was cold, right? yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> It's ridiculous, and they did the same thing with SARS back in the day. But here's the here's the funny bit, and you know SARS. That was like I think it was 2001. I want to say 2001. It might not be uh, anyone listening. Yeah, go for it. Here, uh, actually, I'm actually sharing my uh, my screen here. We'll. Uh, we'll uh, it was 2002 uh, when it appeared. Was it, was it 2002? Okay. Yeah. yeah, we had hospitals. We had hospitals and stuff. Um, you can share your uh, screen if you want. No, it's fine. It's fine. All right. I'll, uh, I'm going to look this up. But uh, see what, what comes up at DuckDuckGo here. Uh, server Acute Respiratory Syndrome. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, SARS has its own web page. Go check out uh, www.sars.gov.ca or ZA. ZA, sorry. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, so so 2002, but here's the thing, right? They didn't have the legislation to lock down the planet back then. And uh, we also had a lot more baby boomers, and uh, we also had uh, X generation kids, you know, uh, that growing up and. We just wouldn't let that shit slide. Like, we shut it down as soon as it started. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, a few hospitals uh, observed uh, some, you know, things, uh, you know, like they, they kind of did the whole, it was a very mild uh, social, uh, um, you know, dis what do they call it? social distancing, rather. Um, but it was, it was only on the properties of the hospitals and the schools. Like, they were just kind of doing, like, a, a very... I guess you say, uh, you know, they're, they're being smart about it. it, and it seems smart. You know what I mean? Like, if it's a thing, you got to treat it like it's a thing, right? I mean, it's only natural. Like, you can't just go and you know, you know, go cry uh, conspiracy. And even in the case of COVID, eighteen years later, you still got to treat it like if it's a thing. You got to treat it like it's a thing. Like, be 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 responsible. Like, don't be a fucking dickhead. You know what I mean? But uh, I'll tell you. They had 18 years to pass legislations that allowed them to shut down the goddamn world. And I know the Trans-Pacific Partnership was at least one of those pieces of, 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 of globalist uh, ammunition that they've got. Um, and we saw the writing on the wall uh, two, three years, four years ago, three years ago, when we were talking about it in our podcast back, the day, uh, back, sorry, back in the day, like uh, Professor Doom was a, uh, he was a big analyst of the, uh, the TPP. And man just funny because now a lot of people were out of tp <laughs> after the, the the lockdown but uh uh sorry i was a bad I joke I, I got it. <laughs> sorry well you're in uh, europe actually what a lot of people don't realize here in north america is that a lot of europeans view us as really dirty fucking pigs because we use paper like most of you guys have bidets don't you yeah, we have uh, showers or bidets. And yeah. See, they actually clean your asshole. You don't just wipe it with paper and walk away like a fucking oh, dirty we're pig. Like the, we're not <laughs> like the Japanese that have like the built-in uh, water. Thing that. You know, well, if you're lucky, sometimes you just have a hole in the ground. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> the Japanese have like the most advanced toilets. My uh, one of my old uh, employers, he was he's Croatian, and he used to tell me. He said when he when he went back to his home country because he was he hadn't been there since he was a child, so he went back there. And it was right after uh, the Bosnian Serbian War too, so mm -hmm. like a lot of things were a lot of infrastructure was missing. You know what I mean? So anyway, yeah. uh, he goes back there and uh, goes, yeah, there is there is literally he goes there is literally uh, 
handprints on the wall where, where you kind of lean. <laughs> <laughs> I was I like, like I was like, oh, you're making that up. Yeah, no, I, he I, was he was he, he was making it up. He was joking. He, it wasn't handprints. Well, it yeah, us, yeah. They were, they were, they, but they had painted footprints where, where you should put your feet so you could aim your ass at the hole in the ground. <laughs> See, the truth is actually funnier than you joke, you know. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it was like really. I mean, people were like buying tons of. I don't know. Also here, like people were toilet prepping and everything. It was ridiculous. And, yeah. Um, like I don't know. They just like uh, you know. Whenever like I can use fucking leaves if I want to. If there's like no toilet paper, well, you know we will survive. You know. Well, I we got a product uh, out here. They're called J cloths, and they're just synthetic cloths. Very, and they're kind of got like a mesh. They're kind of like a mesh, like a very tiny, tiny mesh holes. And anyway, they're easy to clean. And uh, I bought that. I bought a bunch of those and a lot of soap. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was running out yeah. of socks. I was running out of socks, so I had to get clever. <laughs> and because all the toilet paper was uh, like used up, all of the piles that you bought, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. you know what's funny? Where I live in Kelowna, um, we were late to the party because like everybody else was like 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 all the big cities. We're we're a city, but we're not a big city. We're kind of like a, a really small city, really. I, I I wouldn't even classify it as a city, to be honest with you, because I've seen larger towns. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, we're up in the mountains in Kelowna. Like we're kind of we're very very separate from the rest of the country, really, because we're so high up and just kind of I don't know, <laughs> just. Not 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 a mainland uh, kind of flatlander, you know what I mean. But anyway, fucking, I was watching on the news, and I even said for I don't know for months, I was like, yeah, nothing like that's happening here. They're not shutting nothing down. They're not doing that. You know, I I buy toilet paper at the gas station, and it was true. And then it finally got here. You know what? I think in in entire in the entirety of this province in British Columbia, I think there's only like I think there was eighty cases. That's nothing, man. That's like crazy. Like it's less than a fucking flu. It's nothing. That's nothing. That's like I don't know how many people you have there. How many like Jesus? I think we lost more than that in boating accidents. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, for sure. I mean, more more, more people were probably killed by I don't know a moose than than that. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Or a shark attack, you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. <laughs> I mean, you know, and then like they lock down the whole world over this um, basically this uh, flu. Yeah. Well, it's a little bit more than the flu. I mean, you know, give them that. It's maybe a little bit more than the flu, the mortality rate. Well, maybe. I, you know, I have an interesting analogy about the whole thing, and you know, in a way, it. it I, I want to add levity and make a bit of a joke, but at the same time, I'm also not joking. So please, uh, you know, take take this in the way I intend, uh, Mister and Mrs. Listener. Um, this is kind of like this is the ending of Empire Strikes Back. Mm -hmm. I agree. That's exactly what I was thinking, man. Were you? <laughs> and, I, was, and, and, I, was, I was thinking about the, the Star Wars Episode 3, where, like, the Emperor Palpatine rises, you know? Yeah. Well, in, 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 the, em the, in the Empire oh, Strikes okay. Back, in the Empire Strikes Back, it's that, that dark moment when you realize... Holy crap, I just bit off more than I could chew. You know, like like Luke stops his training and then he goes after the, the he goes after the Mr. Batty, but the Mr. Batty was already ready for him. You know what I mean? And like and then at every turn everybody ends up losing. You know what I mean? And and it just ends on that like it's I can't even call it bittersweet. There was nothing sweet about it, you know. Everybody got screwed over. Han got thrown into like a carbonite, uh you know what I mean? Uh the Wookiee yeah, is the, the the Wookiee is crying, and you know 
and 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 so uh, sorry, uh, Luke loses his yep. hand, and he's all fucked up, and his you know and his pride is you know gone, and he also screwed up his training because he left early. I mean, the whole thing is dark, 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 and it's the Empire striking back. Well, this is uh, this is Sars Kov too. Exactly, man. I see what you're saying, but like uh, for me, it's kind of reminded me like of. Episode three, and I know that's the prequels. Yeah. So. Well, you know what? You're also uh, you're also younger than me too, so you'll have a deeper connection with the with the prequels, right? So I can see um, what you're saying. Well, no, I never was like really into it, but like I think I yeah, as a kid I saw the prequels. Yeah. So. yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it, yeah. it it like it struck me because like uh, you know Emperor Palpatine, you see how he rises there, right? And like it's basically also because of a bunch of false flags, right? Right. Well, you know what we do need? We need our return of the Jedi. That's what we need. Yeah, we, I agree with that. We need that 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 third that third part. That that's you know, we take the fight to them. We do it intelligently, and we blow up the Death Star. You know what I mean? Exactly. That would be amazing. But so far, we haven't seen that part yet. Either. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're fucking losing right now. We're totally, we're totally losing. They, they, they won this time. Like they completely won. Like there's hands yeah, down. It's like hands down. It, it's, you know, it's, it's not over. There's still time left. But you know what? You know they're coming back with another. They're coming back with another round. Uh, and you know, it, 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 they're propo- I don't know, man. Another disease or whatever the leg might come. And they've Back used it, they, they've used every trick in the book. First, it's disease. You know, first it's the disease itself, and, or the fear of the disease. Sorry, that's what I was starting off with with the whole thing. Uh, you know, when we heard about it happening in China, when those you know the first reports got leaked, and then. Then they were under suspicion of hiding it, remember? Or even potentially, this was actually in the news in the very beginning that they potentially could have been working on this virus and it, and it, and it got, it had escaped. But that, that slowly got, that got scrubbed. That got scrubbed from the news rather swiftly. Anyway, um, and then, and then you have uh, like, then, then you have it starting to spread out to the European countries, and then you get your lockdowns there. Italy, Italy first, right? You yeah. The first, Italy, then Spain. Italy. Yeah. Spain, yeah. Spain. Yeah. And then, then yeah, everybody yeah. else, one by one, like dominoes. They just started. They just started following suit, and then now we. Got, that's not enough. You got to throw the whole racism card in there now too. So you get that racism card in there, and then the Navy goes and says aliens are... Well, they didn't actually say aliens are real. They said that UFOs, that was a true UFO encounter that that footage was about, and blah, blah, blah. And still, they didn't really admit anything. They just said it's a UFO. That still means it's unidentified. So fuck. I mean, everyone else is up in arms about it, but the thing is, is that everyone else is up in arms about it. Like, it's just another distraction, like, to get other people, like, divided on the issue. Either you're arguing about whether or not aliens are real, or if you like blacks or you like whites, and you know, I mean, now you uh, got then you know, your rights being taken away slowly, and uh, yeah, privacy being uh, worthless. I mean, it's basically already worthless. But uh, yeah, we don't uh, from a statutory jurisdiction, we don't have any rights anymore. Exactly. Unfortunately, you know? that's the way it is. I mean, yeah. Well, uh, man, just fucking. I don't know, man. Ah. It's uh, it's it, it in a way it's uh, this is why I said like the somber tone that somber tone of the end of uh, Empire Strikes Back is how I feel right now about this whole situation and uh, I tell you that the 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 coolest thing ever is seeing something super cool <laughs> and that's uh, the successful launch of the. Uh, of the uh, joint uh, NASA SpaceX launch there uh, that took place yesterday, and uh, they docked with the ISS today in the uh, first crew Dragon capsule or module, whatever you want to call it. But anyway, it was that was quite fast. It was quite fantastic and fascinating all at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't I didn't watch it yet, but um, I will. Oh, dude, you got to check out these spacesuits, man. These spacesuits that uh, I, I believe they were designed by SpaceX also. They look like they're out of, like, uh, I don't know, uh, like 
Battlestar Galactica or something. They look pretty dope, but it's like, it's just like, I don't know, man. It's like, it almost looks like it's from a movie, but it's like, shit, I guess this is where it's going next. And they're all got touch screens now. Like they're not using like joysticks and knobs and, and, and push buttons and shit like they did before, you know, uh, it, 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 they basically work like on these touch screens and it all looks like Star Trek and shit. It's, it's pretty sick, man. <laughs> I'm, oh, nice. and it, you know that's a, that's a little grain of hope. It's, uh, you know this whole Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hilarious that being uh, like brought also back. Did you see the logo of the Space Force for Donald Trump? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't have any opinion on that yet. I want to see how that plays out because, like, I, a lot of a lot of what comes out of his mouth is almost like it seems like they're uh, almost like he. Oh, boy. Yeah, it's like it's it's like you know when you have like a focus group and you just kind of bounce ideas off of a bunch of idiots who don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Exactly. That's what he does. <laughs> so that, yeah, that's about right. That sounds about right. I mean, I agree. With, I think SpaceX will do probably a thousand times more in terms of space exploration and uh, you know, and space force of Donald Trump. You know. Well. Yeah, and it's funny because you know if you look at things like uh, okay, was it uh, what's his uh, name, Jeff uh, Be- Bezos uh, from uh, Amazon? Amazon, yeah. So he's got uh, was it uh, not what the hell's the name of his uh, his space uh, space wow. thing there? I gotta look it up. I'm shit with names, but uh, yeah, it's not Virgin Galactic. It's the other guy. That's the other friggin' eccentric weirdo. Um, just gonna look up space agencies. I want I want to get this right. I'm actually sober. I just have a shit memory. <laughs> Blue Origin. Yeah, that's the one. Blue Origin, right? Uh, I wanted to say Big Little Airspace, but they both begin with a B, so I was like, kind of, kind of screwed my brain up. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah. So you got Blue Origin, you got Bigelow Airspace, you got uh, Virgin Galactic, you got SpaceX, and these are all commercial space companies. And between them, they've done, like, so much, like, for for research development and advancement in that field, right? And and for different fields, too. Don't, don't get me wrong. They're not just putting something up into orbit. They all have in, individual kind of, you know, uh, goals in mind. I think it's uh, with Bigelow, they want to do like hotels in space. So they're doing the inflatable, you know, um, habitats and things like that, um, which is something that's needed, not just to be up in space and survive, but also to be on other planets where the environment is not hospitable. Then you got uh, you got the Vir- Virgin Galactic, that their their spacecraft is basically it's it, it's. It's suborbital and uh, and like it's an atmospheric ship as well as being an orbital ship, like in space, um, capable of reentry without burning up. You know, uh, I mean, everyone has like a different take on their technologies, and it's and it's beautiful to see. I, uh, there's another company whose name eludes me at the moment, but they were just practicing catching the boosters falling out of orbit. Uh, they draw a parachute and then they just basically pluck them out of the air with a helicopter i mean like all different fancy techniques that are just simple and they work i mean spacex kind of they really really did uh they they they, they did the coup de gras there with the uh, with the boosters landing themselves like with, with propulsion that shit's just sick to watch um I could watch boosters land all day because it just looks like it just it looks like it's in a movie it does but you know, it's just bizarre. And, and like, uh, you know, you've and you've got to like. Uh, obviously, the Earth is around, and like to all of the flat Earthers that were thinking that the Earth was a a fucking. To, yeah. Hey, hey, listen, let me stop you for a second. Do you have a, a voice activation on? Because I think you might want to turn the threshold down because it's, it seems to just be uh, kind of missing the first parts of anything you say. Okay. Um, am I going to go to the settings or? Yeah, I guess. 
You've been good like 95% of the time. Just the last couple of sentences, it's just the first uh, couple syllables get missed and then you kind of cut in. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, I'll find it. I'll just uh, keep on talking. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, for anyone listening, by the way, this, uh, this whole thing was kind of, this is very, very spontaneous. I had nothing set up. I was, I had my OBS was completely ripped apart. I was uh, trying to get my Raspberry Pi to run an RTMP uh, server uh, module, and I was basically in the middle of nothing. <laughs> but anyway, we decided just to go on and say, "Fuck it, why not do a little yeah, podcast right, right. here?" But uh, uh, how is it now? Is it there? Yeah, that sound. I, well, we'll we'll know we'll know after we talk for a bit. Anyway, uh, that sounded pretty good, like just there. But yeah, yeah, perfect, perfect, perfect. I don't know if it it could it could be the my software too. Uh, if if I'm talking, maybe it's uh, it might be uh, taking the lead. If you know what I mean there. So, but uh, I'll uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I had my OBS all ripped apart. So, like when uh, we first started up, I had none of my scenes were set up because normally I actually feed in uh, data from my other machine uh, through the network, and I'm usually bringing those in and incorporating them. But uh, this time I'm not. So basically, everything was dead, 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 like Dillinger. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, it is what it is. But uh, yeah, no, the state of affairs, man. But look, but look at all, but look at these riots. Like I was saying, though, um, like, like they they had to pull the race card. And when I say race card, what I'm trying to say is like it, it was absolute gaslighting, in my opinion. Anyway, uh, you might disagree, you guys, but it, it was gaslighting. I mean, to to make national news of such a thing during a hypercritical, intense time like it just i don't know man like there journalism should have certain tact is all i have to say and i i, I don't know man i i made a comment on twitter a, a few uh a couple of weeks ago maybe last week i uh basically said maybe maybe and just maybe i actually did die and i'm just stuck in this weird fucking purgatory none of you are actually real you're just part of my hell because <laughs> no this is like i'm in bizarro land it's like suddenly all the rules have changed like you know what i mean like and i'm sure a lot of people feel the same way that's why i'm saying it but i mean it's like it's like all the rules everything has suddenly changed to the point where it's like uh wow or it could be the realization it could be the realization that i was right and I hate being right about things, you know. You know, we've spent so much time trying to warn people about things, and still, it still, still went down. Yeah, that's just. Uh, I mean, it's just a a bizarro world, as you said before. I mean, would have guessed in 2019 that you would have to wear face masks or. <laughs> You know, you don't have to, but like that, all of the people would be wearing them and like social distancing. And that 40 million people in the United States would go unemployed and, um, you know, all, all this kind of stuff. And like, I don't know, allegedly 100,000 deaths. It's, it's <laughs> I know. Like all of the time, you got inundated with this sort of psychological warfare, which is coming from the media, right? Absolutely. Well, the media uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I I, yeah, I made a point to uh, I, I. It was funny because someone was talking about the news the other day, and I said, "Well, someone just basically said, oh, well, the, the the news seems like it's being controlled, as if they just realized it was happening.'" And I, I had to I had to remove myself from my own brain for for a minute because I had to I had to think for a second, like you know, I know what I know from my experience and a lot of people don't you know like they 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 do take these things as gospel when they see it on the news right and they 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 believe that the media is there to give them information you know but you know it, it, i had to make a point to say that like first off 
the Associated Press was purchased by Reuters uh, in like the ni- late 1980s, early 90s. Uh, it was late 1980s when Reuters bought the Associated Press. And the Associated Press is who gives the news to everybody. And guess who owns Reuters? This is Rothschild Empire owns Reuters. So, I mean, like, right away, right, the, like the world's news are, is owned by the same people that own all of our money. Exactly. So, exactly, yeah. I mean, like, guys, like, it doesn't take a whole lot of math skills to figure this one out, and you don't have to be a rocket science either, you know, like, it's... Just, yeah, uh, you don't have to you don't have to and like when you see the, just the narratives being pushed like for example with uh you know the numbers and uh, and the rates and they pretty much uh you could make anything sound scary when you just rattle off you know numbers like today 90 95 yeah. people were infected and yeah. uh, it's risen by 30 percent and now and you know yeah. uh, that's how that's how the media does it they are really playing on this uh, emotion of fear is what they did with the virus. Which, oh, they, uh, they did that during 9-11 as well. They did that with the Boston mm-hmm. Marathon. They did that with the uh, Sandy, yeah, San, yeah. Sandy yeah. Hook. They, uh, they did it with the, everything. and the Canadian yeah. Parliament shooting. They, they've done it like every single time. I remember tracking in real time. I was actually, that was when I first left, I was in, uh, I was in, uh, yeah, I was in, I was in Saskatchewan. Yeah. I was in Saskatoon, uh, at the, uh, uh, Diefenbaker park, uh, in my truck. I was, uh, camped out there overnight and I was on, I, I, had, I was using a, a radio app on my phone, uh, to listen in on everything. And I was tracking all of the news reports about what was happening um with the uh with with the, with the parliament uh shooter like that you know he was uh, i don't know mm-hmm. they were chasing him or they apparently there were snipers on rooftops and this and that and like they were like, and there was no chase oh yeah apparently there was a car chase like all these reports came out and then instead of going back and redacting them and saying we were wrong or anything they just didn't say anything. There's, they just they just left all these points just kind of hanging, like as if they, you know what I mean? The same thing happened with 9-11, because on day one in 9-11, people claimed, uh, especially with the Pennsylvania um, uh, crash, uh, well, the, the, the airplane that crashed in Pennsylvania, a lot of people on day one said that they saw an explosion in the sky, which either means there was a bomb on board or it means that somebody shot it down that simple there's one of the two it's one or it's the other they don't spontaneously combust you know what i mean anyway they scrub those reports and uh i'm sure there's i'm sure people have recordings of that somewhere because i've seen a few here and there but they get scrubbed pretty fast when they pop up but anyway yeah people you know like they just they just get rid of that uh report they just basically stuff it away because you know it might not fit the narrative if they adjust you know they they always adjust the narrative because people's viewpoints always switch and change so they're always going to switch the narrative on the fly and uh they've gotten rather good at it now i have to say those operations it's not really easy to plan it out to perfection so you need to kind of a bunch of exactly yeah yeah Yeah, you need wiggle room (laughs) room yeah exactly exactly so what's what uh i think we are seeing right now is um i know how to describe it it's like a a uh, infueled kind of uh divide and conquer up uh mixed with uh civil unrest uh slash ma- uh, like uh martial law and hegelian dialect solution. As a solution, right? So yeah, yeah. So you have like the problem with his, which is like uh, the rioters, and obviously you have the solution, which would be even more like uh, totalitarianism. Well, that's what they're that, that's what they're trying to do. Yeah, they're gaslighting people, and you know what? Here, here's the here's what I have a problem with is like if you take a bunch of people who are already sensitive, right? They don't know which way to go, but they're just angry and they want justice and answers. And then you get a bunch of other idiots who come in there and then they raise it up a notch. 
and, and they, they they attack. Okay. You know yeah. what I mean? That pushed it. That could push somebody else over the edge, and then you get your mob mentality, and you get a mob reaction. And then while that mob reaction is taking place, the the, the provocateurs fuck. The, they just fuck off, and then uh, then. Well, then, then the authorities will come in with shock and awe, and guess what? Rapid response units and shock troops come in. That's that's how they fucking deal with it. It's that simple. And you know, the, the, I I don't I don't agree with any of this gaslighting. And I I can see it. I can see the forest for the trees in this case. Like I can just see what they're doing. Like I exactly. It, it's very very uh, evident. Um, and it, when uh, there was a cop in L.A. Uh, was it yesterday there and basically what what was happening was uh i guess one cop noticed some kid that was sketchy or something he went after him to either detain him maybe arrest him i'm not exactly sure but another person the provocateur of sorts sp- went and spilt something on him, like threw a, a cup of water or liquid of some sort at him anyway that distracted him to go after the other guy and then suddenly three, four, or five people just kind of pulled him down to the ground and started kicking and beating the guy. Now, he wrestled his way up and got out of there, but as he was doing so, like, regular, normal, everyday people that were there just protesting because they didn't like what they, you know, had witnessed, were trying to help the cop. They were trying to get these fucking idiots off the cop. I mean, I still think, I, I'm, well, not think, I know for a fact that people are still good. Like, people are good people. Um, yeah. and like a bunch of those videos yeah. as well. For example, in Chicago, there was a brawl yeah. between, um, you know, uh, police officers that were pretty outnumbered against a sort of mob. So there was also, also always the kind of, you know, um, usual suspects that you, you would see involved in violence. So the black block of guys yeah, would really like, you know, to beat the cop and they actually got a female cop on the ground. Right. Jesus. The male cop uh, started to, like, uh, you know, uh, tried to help her. And um, in the end, actually, both of them were, like, caught up in the middle of a giant, of, um, you know, mosh pit. Not, well, not mosh pit, but sort of mosh pit. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, no, I get what you're saying, for uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, and uh, then a bunch of people actually came in and laid their ra- arms around the, the police officers and helped them get up, right? So obviously, like, yeah, you have seen them, uh, some cases where, like, good people would step up, step up, like, just, like, see, this is totally wrong. This is, like, you know, maybe people also realize that, you know, a lot of these people who would do such things are not exactly, you know, um, should I put it, like, legitimate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, legitimate people, right? Well, that, well, that's just it. I mean, like, okay, exactly my point, because, like, that guy who threw liquid at the cop, let me paint a picture for anyone who didn't see the footage. I was watching it. Uh, it was unfolding live, and uh, what was going on, basically, was, like, there's, like, at least two or 300 police officers there and constables, you know what I mean? Like, they were just... They were there forming lines to, uh, to 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 stop this crowd of people rioting, and they were in like downtown L.A. basically. And in that kind of environment, and yes, half of them had shotguns with uh, with less than lethal rounds, you know, either rubber bullets or or, 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 or bean bags, whatever they were loaded with, doesn't really matter because they didn't actually pop off. I was thinking they were going to pop off any second, the way things were going at one point. But my point is is in that kind of environment who in their right mind would go and just toss a uh, toss liquid or you know throw their throw their coffee or something at a cop like i mean you've got to be either really really stupid or got some brass balls on you or you just or you're psychopathic or you want to die like you know what i mean like it's like there's there's no reason for that and then like I don't know, man. It just, it seems like it was, it was definitely a, a, a provocation, you know, and, and it was just, ah, it just looked like it was like, I don't know. It, it, it seemed like, it seemed like they wanted that to happen is what I'm getting at because they were ready for it. The second that happened, um, like I didn't see any shotguns, eh? I'm going to tell you right now. I didn't see any shotguns like at first. 
Um, I only saw it during the scuffle that took place, which lasted probably about five to eight minutes or something in, in its you know entire duration. And then and then they formed a line and, and they all had these shotguns. And within ten minutes, within ten minutes later, like um, suddenly they all had billy bats. Batons, right? Yeah, yeah, the batons, exactly. Wow, well, I'm just you know, I say billy bats. I was born in '74, so. <laughs> but, but yeah, I'm just saying. I mean, like shit. Like, I mean, I have to look at the footage again. Maybe I saw it wrong. My eyesight sucks, but I'm pretty certain. Like the, I, I know how a, I know how to hold a shotgun, and you don't hold a, a a baton that way. You know what I mean? So I saw a lot of guys with shotguns. Is all I'm saying. And like, it's like weird. Like I was like, oh no, this is gonna go. This is gonna go south. But like, it was. It, I don't think it went the way. Like, okay, hang on. If I were to assume that this was a provocation that was planned, I don't think it went the way that they wanted it to go because you had, instead of mass mob mentality taking place, you actually had people trying to help the cop. And then they, 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 they took the other guy away. I mean, so, I mean... The cops are, they're, they're, I don't think the cops are in on it, by the way. I'm not saying that. I'm saying they're doing their job and they're responding and reacting. But I'm saying that I think they, I think whoever else is involved is trying to get that response, you know what I mean, to, to happen differently. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Exactly. exactly. And uh, I have been watching some CNN uh, tonight, actually. And um, I have been mentioning constantly that there is, outside groups that are trying to kind of um provoke this to make it turn violent and stuff my guess is that they're probably going to they're gonna you know, feed into uh, it yeah they're they're gonna feed into it of course yeah they're gonna they're not gonna tell you the real culprits are they're no. gonna blame it all on the white supremacist stuff. yeah yeah exactly <laughs> that's what i was just about to say they're gonna they're gonna deflect it they're gonna they're gonna say exactly what's on everyone's mind and then deflect them over to another potential cause yeah. or something yeah, yeah 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 exactly and they're setting it up right now so not right now i've been like seeing on cnn like there's uh people have been saying yeah there's a lot of white people amongst <laughs> amongst the uh, people who are looting <laughs> i mean you know it's unbelievable like i mean oh. the state of affairs these days i i'd like it you know i i follow jeff jeff sees work closely you know, on I, this I uh, jeff pandemic jeff work. and on the uh, protests now and i actually saw, saw the video where in dallas a bunch of bricks would actually be piled up in front of a building yeah. right for the protesters to throw <laughs> and um i mean it's just exactly the tactics that we have seen from like, groups such as Oh, Antifa. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. The, you know, uh, there's uh, the new the, Black Panthers. There's oh, oh, groups. I know. I, I was, I was having a conversation. I couldn't even remember half the groups now. But you're right. Yeah, it was the the new Black Panthers. You got Antifa. You got Black Lives Matter. You yes. got you, you got you got the Rainbow uh, Alphabet yeah, Soup Troop. Uh, you, you, I mean, like it's. <laughs> Gosh, damn it! Yeah, you've got a bunch of a bunch like, of groups, and and, and they, they were. They, they, and not only that, I mean, the institutions that that educate these these kids are also funded by the George Soros Foundation, and and courses are, are you know, uh, like the curriculum itself uh, steers so, them so in a, it, it steers yeah. them in a direction. You know what I mean? Like, so you get regular folks that just have a fucked up sense of morality i mean when they want to tear down a historical statue just because it reminds them of a bad time in history um that's kind of like burning books like they did in the spanish inquisition you know what i mean like it's uh it, it, it's 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 removing it's removing stuff that we could learn from and and hopefully not repeat yeah. down the road you know and it's that that, that i find distressing yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And like, uh, also when when you see it's uh, basically happening here, like, there's no justification for any of uh, like the looting, anything that has been happening. Uh, that uh, you know, that as I said before, like the the community, the community that you know, this, these people are striving like to protect, or at least that's what they're saying. 
Yeah. They are, they're actually damaging it and with all the all of the rioting and looting. And uh, you know, when you look at these Antifa guys, I mean really most of them could probably do ten push ups. Yeah. There's weaklings and um you yeah, know, it's yeah. Like, it's like they have been this uh Gen X uh Gen Z. Well not Gen sorry, Gen Z, Gen yeah, Z and Daniel yeah. sort of um no privileged they are really the the privileged kids right because they can go to all of those colleges and you know get your uh you know uh cultural marxism yeah indoctrination and uh you know when they you know it's, um i mean oh it's it's kind of also making sense i mean from there a kind of twisted world view i think that white people have inherent oh, it's, privilege it's kind of because making... they probably had it throughout their lives so yeah um, but obviously the notion of white people having, you know, any sort of significant privilege is just ludicrous. I mean, so tell that to, to a guy who lives in a, in a trailer park of, of, you know, of, um, I don't know, of a hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Making, you know, sm- uh, selling, uh, yeah. smoke, you know, like, like, yeah, like me, uh, like me, when I lived up in the orchard there, uh, up by the airport here in Kelowna, I lived in a trailer, yeah. in a trailer park. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's exactly. like, I mean, like, yeah, where's, I mean, ha- how's my white privilege paying me off there? Yeah. You know? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You have probably the least white privileged guy I know. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. You it's the nicest have. thing anyone's ever said to me. <laughs> no, I mean, I have the Swiss privilege because I was born in Switzerland. So yeah. Yes. Well, you guys are all, you guys have nice watches, that's for sure. You have nice cheese, nice watches. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, Chocolate. your cheese has holes in it, motherfucker. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, more more holes than like some of the stories. more more holes in the last yeah. Star Wars movie. Yeah, the, uh, man, the Star Wars that was butchered. We'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> just going to go That's a whole podcast on its own, buddy. We should do that once. We should totally. I, I have no problem with that. that. A, a yeah. complete Star Wars episode. That, that actually, that would be really good. I, I, I would prep up for that one. That's nice, 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 nice. nice. Uh, but like w- what I was saying, like you know, all of this uh, things, like they were in the sort of shadows. They were now ramped up with all of the narratives from the media sort of re-emerging. So mm-hmm. All of a sudden. Like, when was the last time you heard about BLM or about, you know, Antifa, right? It was, uh, like, it was, right? It was like 2018 or 20, late seven, 2017. Well, when they really were doing stuff. They were, uh, yeah. And you know what's really funny? And um, I don't mean to cut you off. I didn't mean I just derailed you and I apologize. But the funny thing is last year we had that huge that huge Bilderberg meeting that was completely blocked out to the media and only, you know, it's by special invite only. And it was very, very secretive. Like, you know, and I just, I wonder, you know, a a guy has to think, he has to ask the question, like, I wonder if this is what they were talking about. Exactly. I mean, it's entirely possible. I mean, all of these things happening, like one after the other, we almost had, you know, we forget we had the killing of play money and like a hyped up uh, sort of uh, you know potential of world war three with iran yeah. with like russia who would probably jump in and and, and whatever else right we yeah. had the, at the beginning of the year we have the pandemic now we have the riots and that like uh, you know it's hard to predict what you know people what these people will come up with. i mean a hack attack is possibly something the future a drought a, a famine that results out of it i mean it's it's crazy i mean they will step to no end so with their well i mean hey look, look i mean uh, completely uh uh valid i mean last year i mean california and not last was it last no it was a year before i'm sorry last year there's a lot of fires but the that year before fires, last yeah. oh uh, uh, even here in Kelowna, like uh, a lot of british columbia was on fire and so was california i mean uh, I was working. I remember we were uh, working on a job site. Uh, we were building a, 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 a chicken farm and big structure and all this and that, but that's not even the point, man. You couldn't breathe. Like, you couldn't see the sun. The sun looked like an orange disc in the sky, and it was like that for weeks just because of all the fires. Like, it was just, yeah, it, it changed the entire 
it it changed the weather system to be fair like all the fires because like it was just so everything was burning i mean like what's next what's next what's gonna happen next i was you know what i'm i i didn't want to say anything before um they they successfully launched the uh, rocket yesterday on the falcon 9 with the dragon capsule but like i was just praying i was just praying in my mind i was just like please 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 don't 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 do anything don't don't blow up don't like we, the last thing I, we need at this point in history is is to you know what i mean to lose to lose uh, you know what i mean cuz this was actually a historical mission right so i was thinking to myself i was like if if some asshole was an opportunistic motherfucker wanted to crush people's hopes and dreams, they would you know what I mean sabotage this. Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. Please, so, man. I didn't say it publicly because I didn't want to manifest the uh, the result. Like you know what I mean. So I was like, fuck that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, man. Oh, it was you know. It, it's so weird how on one hand everything is so messed up down here. Um, at the uh at the municipal and you know at the at, at, at the neighborhood level it gets like i don't want to use the word sheep but the they are very very sheep like these people like the just you know the, the ones that you pass on the street that aren't really aren't really observing what's going on they're just reacting and doing what they're told and I don't blame them. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it's hard enough to navigate through life. So I know I get it. It's not. It's not like I'm. Yeah, I'm not. A thousand other issues that yeah. uh, you know are more yeah. important to you. See, yeah. The moment. My my yeah. job is dealing emotionally with this kind of shit. So I mean, I'm glad that other people don't have to do it because there'd be a lot more. You know, the suicide rate would probably be pretty high. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly, man. Yeah. No, so there's some. I mean, oh, whatever. I mean, bright spots. Um, just derailed like a a sort of awakening that was happening towards their uh scandemic yeah at least i felt a little bit like it was more people was were realizing it. well i've uh, noticed that people have done that yes yeah they've kind of like, they do know something's not not adding up or making sense exactly and i like i talk to people in my personal life and they all say well you know I, it's like a death rate of like the flu and like and, uh, you know we had like so and so many cases and, like 90 percent of them in this country recovered and uh you know yeah it's just it's just fairy tales from the media to keep you afraid constantly and so when you take a look uh at sweden like uh, i talked actually to a swede today and like he told me about right so most of the people, half of the people who actually died from the virus, uh, died in nursing homes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, most of them actually had uh, were on had you know required to have constant care, anyways. And only a bunch of less employees were coming in because they were scared of the virus. So you know uh, you obviously had that sort of happening. And these people, uh, anyways, like. You know, uh, the sounds they were in the last months of their life so you know when they got infected this was the kind of the straw that broke the camel's back yeah uh, many ways, right so yeah and, they know it's not really that it's like that dangerous the virus it mostly yeah. infected people who were old heads preconditions yeah just like the fucking flu does exactly <laughs> exactly oh god damn it um Oh yeah, this yeah, Sweden did it the smart thing. I mean, they the Swedes they I, I mean they 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 just uh, like let it let it, uh, life go on normal as for the most part they banned like large gatherings of five hundred people or more. Yeah, that's nothing compared to what other countries did, which was like fine people up to five thousand euros here in Arizona. Yeah, at least it's not Ebola. <laughs> yeah, at least it's not Ebola, right? That's what I'm gonna name. I'm gonna name this podcast. At least it's not Ebola. That's gonna be the that's name. Good, yeah, that's, that's gonna good, be man. the name of this one. Yeah, yeah, that'll get that'll get some hits. Yeah, because uh, Ebola, I mean, <laughs> probably still in a lot of people's minds. Bleeding out my eye sockets isn't a. It, 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 you know what? I'd I, I'd rather have the COVID than uh, than the Ebola. To be honest with you. But, uh, 
Yeah. I got a new song I'm going to be uh, recording soon, and uh, I'm not going to spoil the surprise just yet, but uh, okay. I'm working on it. I bet like now the COVID seems to be all gone. Like none of the people on the mainstream media are actually saying, are, like they when the people who were holding up the guns at the, the state houses showed up, they were all saying like, why are they congregating the pandemic? Right now, nobody's saying that for those protesters right now. Yeah. And that's a weird thing, eh? Is that... Uh... Like again, that's a, so that's a, that's a I, I guess a kind of social deflection, really. It's uh, uh, it's bizarre because like everyone's up in arms about uh, about about a guy who died. Like I mean, it, I, and that's not that's not it's not something to not be mad about. Obviously, I guess not what I mean. It's just that it, it's a way to take people's attention off of one thing it, it it's 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 basically misdirection it's the same trick that magicians use you know what i mean and i'm not trying to uh i'm not trying to uh like you know uh you know lessen the 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 heartbreak of losing somebody and uh, you know my best goes out to uh, the family of of i think his name was uh uh, uh george floyd i think it was Anyway, floor, yeah. yeah, and you know, I mean, it's sad, and it's and it's and it's tragic, and it's also very horrible that uh, a police officer was involved in all this and that. But uh, it, was, it, 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 it it's like the way that it makes like the, the way it makes the 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 public like mainstream, uh, and it becomes a thing. That's what drives the people. It's not the fact that it happens. People know that these things happen every day. They're just better off not knowing about it, and they feel better. And I'm not saying that's bad. It's like if you've heard of every single bad thing that happened every single day, like you'd you'd, you'd want to you you know you'd want to go and like you know jump in a lake or something. Like it, you, you you just you know people find comfort in just living their life sometimes. And I think that's the knee jerk reaction that a lot of people have most of the time, right? But yeah. w when it affects them emotionally and it keeps getting drilled into them and then other people talk about it it has like an escalation effect and it kind of it kind of increases like exponentially and then well like i said it gets to a tipping point and when the tipping point is right there clear and present all it takes is some jerk to do something stupid exactly you know obviously Martin Luther King, uh, he would he would not approve of this. Uh, what is I mean? No, I don't have to speak for him. No, like, uh, from judging from what he has said, like he he was all about the peaceful protests, uh, and yeah, he was oh. all about uh, uh, he was all about uh, racial unity, not racial division, like they're doing right yeah. now with those protests. Absolutely, so yeah. right now it's all of the you know, I uh... all of the. Evil whites, you know, that run the cis white male versus the oppressed uh, sort of minorities. And right. It's a narrative they've been rolling out for quite some time now. As I said, Ferguson, Baltimore, you know, all of these, all of these cases. It's just leading up to, yeah. to this. It's led up to this, and as you said, it's a big distraction. I think also. Well, I I have to hand it to uh, to the good folks of uh, London, England. Uh, they had a they had a they they did a rally and there was hundreds hundreds and hundreds of people uh, at the I believe it, I I'm I think it was the uh, the BBC headquarters I I can't be exactly certain I I just caught I just caught the live footage for about uh, for about five or six minutes but I couldn't exactly get a beat on where it was and people were talking about the BBC so I'm not sure anyway it looked like a parliamentary building but I think it's just an old building that the BBC might be in. But it could be a parliamentary building. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it had that kind of style of look. But uh, I have to hand it to them because they organized. They organized a very peaceful protest, and they didn't observe social distancing. But oh well. I mean, in that. <laughs> yeah. But I digress. I, I mean but I mean, no, but uh, I, I mean, I have to hand it. I mean, I guess you know. To be honest with you, there's a lot of. A lot of European and uh, and British sensibilities are more prevalent uh, on the other side of the pond than they are here. 
Um, it's almost like uh, we're like the retarded stepchildren that got kicked out of the house in a way. Um, and you also, like you also saw this, uh, what you were just talking about. You saw this with the COVID protests. For example, I covered like COVID protests in America and in Germany. It's like right. two different dimensions. It's like one is like for lack of a better term, one is idiocracy. The yeah. other one is like, you know, still normal. Germany's people, Germany, yeah, Germany's in a category of their own, though, in a weird way. I, go on, sorry, I, I don't want to cut you off. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, because of like the, the people in the Germany rallies uh, against the COVID lockdown, those people were like, uh, you know, uh, like some someone was like university professors. There was like doctors among them. There was like lawyers. People are saying how this shit is completely unconstitutional, and they're like explaining it, holding up the actually the constitution of Germany it up as a form of protest uh so just holding up the book and being silent and like standing in front of the police some cases of police brutality but i've seen like the protests have been completely peaceful yeah germany yeah. and um like uh you know in america in america it was like uh you know it was like first of all you have a bunch of bills right bunch of um, plants basically and that would go in there and write signs such as i don't know um when i get a haircut <laughs> or i want to you know, get my nails done or you know <laughs> and uh and you know you could obviously trivialize, trivialize and that's what they did trivialize the like the protesters to basically people that are just you know that they just want to get a haircut right so oh, and uh, then you had like a bunch of people uh, which would uh, like be pro-Trump uh, so vocally, and I don't know why because obviously he's part of the machine, right? Uh, which is undeniable, I think. But uh, you know, it was like also a bunch of skulls, a bunch of idiots, and a bunch of reasonable people, and a bunch of um, people who stand up for their rights. But right, uh, I just that like in general in the u.s protest there was a lot more fills and idiots than in the european ones under the covid right i uh i i was in germany for a bit uh i think i was in i was in communication with you when i was in germany actually and anyway uh, yeah I think, so. I think so man yeah so i uh i remember showing up there i was like i don't know i think it was like 2 30 2 30 almost three o'clock in the morning when i got there from the airport so like you could just imagine I was I was knackered already and then uh I get there I just wanted to eat and have a couple of beers and uh yeah I'll never forget this I show up there and I said oh I guess the bar is closed eh they said yeah the bar is closed I said okay all right uh I really was looking forward to a beer said, oh really eh? so anyway I paid for the room the whole bit go up to my room and uh yeah, I'm just getting myself kind of settled in. I busted open the, uh, well, I didn't bust it open. I opened up the uh, the, uh, the, mi the mini bar and I said, oh, hey, look, I got a couple of drinks in there. That's good. So I was like, oh, I was actually, I was, I was quite, uh, I was quite cool with that. I was like, all right, cool. Okay. At least I can have a couple of drinks and I'll get some sleep. Right. So anyway, uh, there's a knock at the door about, I don't know. I've just finished plugging in my laptop. So I was going to start reaching out and just call, you know, like, calling people and say hey you know, i made it home safe uh, sorry i made it germany safe and blah 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 anyway uh there's a knock at the door i open it there's no one there and i look down and there's two big big glasses <laughs> basically yeah two like like liter and a half like tall glasses of, of of um um oh christ uh Shit, I can't remember the name of the uh, of the beer, but it's uh, oh, it was so good. It was a very weedy, weedy, nice beer. Anyway, that was one of the most pleasurable experiences I ever had because it was just like I didn't even ask for it, and he just he went over to the bar, poured these two heaping glasses, and then brought them to my to my door, and then he basically knocked on a door and ran away, like <laughs> like like Nicky Nicky Nine Door, you know, like we used to play as kids. But anyway, uh. I remember telling a joke because they, they are a different type of people because I remember t I was telling this joke and it was a long-winded joke, which, you know, to some of my mates is pretty fucking funny. 
because uh, it's like I just wasted your time for like five minutes and uh, the punchline was silly and dumb and the joke is I wasted your time basically you know what I mean mm-hmm. so anyway I told one of those jokes to this German guy and he stopped like after I finished and said the punchline his expression didn't change and he just he's looking off to the corner of eternity and he didn't bat an eye he he just looked over his and then about 30 45 seconds later he looks at me he goes that's very funny i'm like okay (laughs) (laughs) he he didn't even laugh but he he recognized that it was funny it was just he's just wired differently this guy i don't know it was just bizarre like but i I, my grandfather i sorry my grandmother was like that I don't know. It's a different mentality. Right? Yeah, like it's, it's the German mentality is it's like, you know, they just have like a they're very technical, I guess. I don't know if that makes sense. Like I don't know. analytical very analytical technical, technical yeah, but I don't know. I I mean, I'm not speaking for every single. I'm just speaking from my experience with 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 certain individuals, but I mean, just the reputation you know, it precedes them is all I mean. So uh, yeah, it's it's, it's fun to talk about though, you know what I mean? For sure, for sure. And I mean, you know, like, there's some certain stereotypes that everybody, like, every nationality has. And, Absolutely. Like, uh, you know, I mean, certainly, I've all of, like, experience, a lot of Germans that I've, like, talked to and, like, be friends, been friends with, they are quite, like, uh, you know, yeah, precise. They are really, like, uh, you know, some, uh, like, uh, sometimes a little bit, if you didn't know they were German, you'd think they were sociopaths. <laughs> yeah, they're sometimes also cold, right? Very, so, very, very cold. That's what I mean by yeah. technical. They're very cold and direct. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. That's, a, that's true. Yeah. I had a math teacher in high school, and like, I don't know, he was, he was. This was back in the day when you could still get hit with a belt, you know. But <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, I'm that old, <laughs> but. Uh, Friggin', uh, I remember, uh, yeah, if, if you're sitting there, you know, sneaking a chit-chat with your buddy in class there, he would be at the board writing the shit down. He would just turn around and whip the chalk right at the person talking. <laughs> 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 just just fire it, catch it right off guard. Like, oh, he clipped a few kids in the head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, one time he used he, one time he used a chalk brush. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, one time he uh, used a chalk brush and shot that across the room. I ain't naming That's names. Good. He's probably dead by now. Anyway, it's like this is like thirty years ago, if not. It's yeah. probably like a, a nunchung or something that you would like the same effect as a nunchung or a, <laughs> something <laughs> like that. Would, you would throw. Yeah. Uh, he was, yeah. but I mean, he, he, but he was, he was very, very German. Like, I mean, he, he had, he had a very, that's why he was a math teacher too. Cause he was very technical. <laughs> maybe that's why I'm drawing, maybe that's why I'm drawing the, uh, the, uh, the comparison. I don't know, but yeah. Uh, nobody wants to hear about my youth. <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Like, nah. Uh, well, we grew up in different times. I, I, I made a point of saying this uh, on my birthday podcast, but I'll say it again. My uh, my buddy there, he brought up a really good point, and it was about uh, how, like, our generation, like me and him, like, we were pretty much the last generation that knew what it was like to have to call up a, a girl and have her dad answer the phone. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I don't have to deal with that ever. Yeah, I mean, you got text messaging and this and that, and like you know, email and stuff. No, like, but back in the day, no, you had to call the girl on the phone that was in her house, and guess what? Dad or mom would answer <laughs> sometimes. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, it was. It's just bizarre. I mean, yeah, I mean, it was a different time. It was a totally different time. And like you'd have to get clever and crafty, and like you know, you have to figure out how to be uh, quick on your feet, like because you know, it's like, what are you doing? What do you call it here? It's five thirty. She's eating. It's her dinner time. You know, it's like, oh, how do you get out of that one? This is her. Uh, this is her teacher, Mister. I don't know. Williams, uh, could I please? 
<laughs> or something like that. Maybe that would work. I don't know. No, 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 no. What, no, you, you, what you do, what you do is you suck it up. If you fuck it up, you gotta suck it up. You gotta, you gotta own it first and foremost because the guy's never gonna respect you. He's never gonna let you fuck her, fuck his daughter. Like, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not gonna happen. But uh, you, there, there's, there's ways. If you find out, like, what you know. What, what baseball or football or sports team he likes, you know what I mean? Or what he's into, if he's into fish or if he's into other stuff, whatever the case may be. You know, you go, hey, it's, uh, it's Mandy there. Yeah, yeah. Hey, by the way, the Packers won last night, eh? It was a great game. You know, you get in. You kind of, you kind of, you got to smooth in. got to do that, you know? <laughs> but, uh, I, I, know, I know what you're saying. <laughs> you got to hit him, you got to hit him, you know, with a, you gotta you, you gotta do the trick that the government's doing. You do that deflection trick. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> I actually am blessed because I like never, was never in my life actually had to meet the parents of my of my girlfriends. <laughs> well, you know, well, I mean prostitutes. I mean, you know, well, hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh wait, you're in Switzerland, not Amsterdam. My bad. It's legal, it's legal man. Oh, it is. I know. <laughs> That's why I said it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly, man. exactly. That's when you can say it, right? <laughs> but like, I never made use of it, so you know. Uh, it's like my running joke. Uh, my new running joke. I had a few. I listened to. Hey, by the way, I listened to that uh, Lols Awards show from uh, from a few years back there, and I, I caught one of my one liners that they that they saved. And I fucking I I near I near damn died laughing at myself. It was pretty funny. But uh, I got a new running joke. It's uh, how many dead hookers does it take to change a light bulb? Um, oh wait, hang on, hang, hang on. How many dead hookers does it take to change a light bulb? Yeah, exactly. That's a, yeah. You don't know. Yeah, exactly. Well, you don't know? Oh, well, it's definitely more than four because it's still dark as fuck in my basement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that, that. That's my that's my new running joke. <laughs> we can, uh, I love running jokes. So, so so somebody now 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 somebody's gonna record that and make a meme of me saying that one now. I know it. That's okay. I, I knew it before I said it. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a, yeah, what people are up to. I mean, people have so much time these days. So ah, so. you know, it's I don't know, man. Like I kind of it's weird because right after that period of time back in the day there. Um, something different happened and it was the it was the sudden influx like that's when the flat earth really really started to get pushed and 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 it was what else was it oh the mandela effect that was another big one and 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 these these things became like like they became this entity that completely i got sick of the whole thing uh, and I got completely out of that whole, you know, we call it the truth movement, but it was a bullshit movement, really. <laughs> that became a bullshit movement because, like, it just totally derailed everything that, you know, yeah. what people it, had to actually focus on. Yeah, yeah. It, was, like, I, I know, I know people, yeah. some people had good intentions, but I mean, it was so, so easily, um, like, mired by, like, you know, by, you know, people that didn't really have the same passion. So, like, you had these, you know, independent journalists who were trying to do stuff, and then you had this other bunch of people who were basically just there to hear their own voice. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. You know? And I, I can't say that. I can't I can't even say myself that I, I didn't enjoy being part of you know like the whole you know the, the the whole whatever the whole dynamic i guess but what i what i the reason i walked away was because i was like holy shit you know what this is like this is gonna get out of hand and i don't want to be a part of it but, you know like so i kind of changed it every, I, I just changed up i just said you know what i'm gonna do something different and uh Oh. Exactly, and just like do do more of your own stuff as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, and, yeah. It gets it gets tiring because like when you have to 
you know, I, I don't know, explain to, to people basic, basic reality, right? Yeah. Not everything is a hoax that not everything and, is. And, you know, and no. not, not everyone, not everyone made it through. I mean, uh, uh you remember, uh, Janelle, remember Janelle Dempster? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. She passed away, uh, uh last year, last oh, yeah. year, January. I had no idea, but. Yeah, she, no, no, she passed away, and uh, you know, and, and oh, she, yeah, I, it was, it was, it was kind of, kind of rough. And I want to, I want to basically send out, uh, I want to send out my sympathies also to her family and to all of her friends as well. I mean, uh, I was pretty crushed by it when I when I learned of it. Um, I, you know, who I found out from? Man. My arch nemesis, Josh. <laughs> No, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, Man, yeah. Nice. Truth, truth undenied. But uh, you know, I uh, I've sent him a few messages. We've we've talked since all that, and uh, and you know, I I I basically uh, extended an olive branch and just basically said, hey, man, you know, let's uh, let's put bullshit behind us and uh, move forward and what have you. And uh, hopefully, hopefully he he abides by it and he's cool. And I you know I feel he is and. You know, that's the way it should be like putting yeah. bullshit behind you there's no yeah i mean important. but i mean we, we you know we called each other on our on our bullshit and he called me on bullshit and you know what i mean he wasn't right every time but you know the times he was right i was you know i was full of shit so you know i gotta own it yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean that's also something uh, uh not everybody does like <laughs> own own this actually um fewer and fewer people i would say would are doing that right now yeah well that that's what the world needs right now is a, a little more honesty and a little bit more it's rational to you for, what's that sorry just to you for owning yeah to for owning up right yeah like, well no, i always i always like i also got to like say that like i obviously also like sometimes like uh <laughs> you know Thought some shit that was uh, ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, I'll you know, tell you. I'll right. tell you. I'll, you know what? We were talking. It's it's kind of weird. This is like a weird segue into exactly what we were talking about earlier about gaslighting. Um, like a lot of us that were working together back in those days, uh, a lot of us were starting to see signs of uh, COINTEL Pro, and we weren't we weren't certain who we could trust you know what i mean that we didn't know who was who and then then it became kind of like uh you know the second act of the first movie uh, the thing you know <laughs> like john carpenter's the thing yeah it was kind of like that it was like we didn't know who we could trust and you know like look like like my 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 co-host uh event skeptic turned out to be a, the the biggest flat earther of them all like <laughs> you know what i mean like but I'm not saying he was COINTEL Pro. He was just an idiot. But what I mean is that uh, the, the uh, it, it was, you know, the John LeBons and, and, and those people out there, they were the ones that, you know, we were distrustful of. And then when other people started acting certain ways, I don't know, I think we kind of we kind of wiped everyone with a similar broad brushstroke, if you know what I mean. And, uh, you know, uh, I was new to the game, and I was being... Uh, a bit dumb on my hand you know on my part but whatever it is what it is <laughs> Fuck. it's embarrassing but it is what it is right yeah yeah no it is what it is okay as you mentioned like before the the cold pro was really like you could almost see that uh people were in there to promote certain agendas and you yeah. could, i think there was also a note by cast sunstein right sunstein Oh, can you repeat that whole last sentence? Because you've dropped out and kind of went ping pong robot. Oh, okay. So <laughs> there's also a manual that was laid out by Cass Sunstein. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there was uh, there 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 was also the uh, there was also the uh, training course manual that came right out of uh, the uh, 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 British uh, military. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the one that we covered. Is it the ATF agreed or something like that? Oh, I, I, it's an acronym. I know that much, yeah. and I know it has letters in it. Yeah. 
Uh, we're losing you. Their own documents. We're basically, be now. Is it better? Uh, I just heard. Is it better? Keep talking. Okay. Okay. So, what you had uh, basically happening back then was that uh, platforms such as YouTube, uh, more and more, well, some would call it conspiracy theory videos, but to uh, get popular. Right. And um, obviously, like, for example, with my channel, I did a, a video about uh, analyzing the killing of uh, o, OBL, OBL, right, in Pakistan. Right, and right. The whole, the whole thing about that, where they drove in with some helicopters and then uh, dropped them off in the sea later. <laughs> that got 80,000 views, actually. So, like, people uh, in within, like, the so-called truth movement with, like, legitimate kind of questions, it got hundreds and thousands of views. And that could obviously not stand, right? So, that's why they came in with the cognitive, like, <laughs> trace, infiltration. Sure. Yeah. And uh, they took it up a notch and introduced YouTube censorship, uh, like, it was always there, the YouTube censorship, but they ramped it up, and right now it's to the point where you cannot see you cannot see any videos of, for example, you type in uh, police brutality, and there has been a lot of cases of police brutality in the last right. couple of months with the pandemic and everything. You type that in, and actually, you will not see any videos from. People, so street videos, you will only see like news from BBC, CNN, you know, yeah, MSNBC, whatever, you know. So it's basically you just see what they want you to see about a certain topic when you type something. Absolutely. Like In fact, um, I actually I want to express to the listeners there. Uh, I, uh, I, I myself, I don't use I don't use Chrome exclusively uh, like I used to. Uh, I don't even use Google. I use DuckDuckGo for my search engine, and I use Brave Browser, um, uh, just because they—I don't know if they're secure, secure, but they're definitely more secure, and uh, they don't have the same algorithms that uh, that Google uses. And yeah, YouTube, yeah, geez. Um, They've been slowly destroying their own internal population of of, of artists, basically, and creators. Uh, I still can't believe how some some of these channels can literally get millions of views while actual hard, you know. Uh, hard-working people trying to bring actual real information to people are getting like downsized uh, and you know uh the, the the subscribers are getting unsubscribed uh beyond you know what i mean beyond their own control and, and being demonetized and 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 the the claim system is absolute horseshit because anybody or his monkey could literally file a claim against a YouTuber and that YouTuber is now he has to go and jump through the hoops of the YouTube system uh, in order to uh, to uh, you know respond to it and to defend against the claim you know um, I mean I've I, and I believe me I know because I've gotten hundreds not hundreds no, I, I've gotten a lot of uh, copyright strikes and I've got a couple of um, I've had a couple of violations uh, regarding the uh, uh, the YouTube, uh, whatever the fuck you call yeah, it, the, the guidelines, the guy, the community guidelines. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say EULA, but that's for software. Anyway, um, yeah, man, it's like it, it. It's a weird platform that way because they they hold you. I don't know. They hold you accountable. But you're not able to defend yourself unless you give up everything. You have to basically give up all of your information. You know what I mean? Like, like, so it's like your constitutional self doesn't apply 
until you try to defend yourself. You know what I mean? Like, that's not, that doesn't make any sense. Exactly. <laughs> doesn't make any sense. Yeah. No, I'm just, I'm just right now. I'm just scrolling through everything that's happening right now. I'm looking at, at all kinds of stuff. So I've taken, uh, I've been recording a lot of live feeds in the last uh, couple of days. I'm going to be recording some more, and I'm going to be putting together a compilation of this stuff. Um, and like, just the level of like a torment, you know. Much re like I, I, you know, you know in, uh, you know in Mecca, like when they do their praying, there's like like, like Mecca, Mecca holds like what ten thousand people or something like that, and and they they do their praying and and they're and they're chanting, and there's literally a measurable energetic energy, like they're, they're, they you can literally measure the energy change and shift in, in frequency there, and. I wonder if that small concentrated group can can achieve that kind of measurable shift. I wonder what the hell's happening now right across the United States and every country, like every where you have the greatest concentrations of people feeling a certain way and acting out. I mean, the the negativity must be off the charts right now. Uh yeah, I mean it's just Imagine what it's like when you you've just been you know a locked down for like five months, right? <laughs> and yeah, and especially you, you wake up one day and you see that all of the streets and all all the shops are destroyed, and I uh, know that that you know your car has been vandalized and uh, basically bl uh, chopped yeah. to bits. And, yeah, you know, whatever you know. <laughs> well, I mean, it was. Uh... Was it was it was it Minnesota where everything started there? Was it, no, not Minnesota. It was uh, yeah, it was, Minnesota. was it Minnesota? It was, uh, no, Minnepolis. it wasn't Minnesota. It was uh, Milwaukee. No, um, oh, it was Minnesota. It was Minneapolis, Minnesota. Minneapolis, Minnesota. Okay, it was Minnesota. Okay, cool. All right. I, I didn't want to get it wrong. I didn't. I didn't want to look like an idiot. But I always. All right. Yeah, I can do that. I can do the. I can do that on my own time. Don't worry. Um, but no, uh, yeah. So Minneapolis, and then and then it's L.A. and and, and then it's uh, uh, South Carolina. And, 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 yeah, I mean, and, and, and it just moves like it's almost like uh, it's 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 like a, a tour, like a like, you know, like a band tour on like high speed, like just bam, 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 like all these different places. Suddenly, you're watching a live feed. Oh, yeah. Like I don't even know what I'm looking at. Like <laughs> you know what I mean, like I don't know what what, what location. Really like, I mean, if chrono chronologically speaking, from that I gather, like it was Minnesota, Atlanta. Yeah, that yeah. was like. Fort Worth, then was San Diego. Yeah, San Diego. Later, yeah, and uh, like LA came in. And then tonight was uh, South Carolina, yeah. right? Yeah, South Carolina. Uh, tonight was also Washington D.C. Oh, and, okay, in Washington. Jesus, like I mean, New York as well. Yeah, it, it's all the main epicenters, like uh, of of social culture in the United States, basically. Exactly. You know, the the only thing thing. that's missing on that list is uh, Seattle. <laughs> I I don't know. Seattle is pretty chilled. I think they will have some peaceful yeah. protests for a change. Maybe I don't know. Wow, they're all high on weed anyway. Yeah, exactly. So maybe <laughs> it's gonna be happy. Like the high, the police high on weed to protest with high on weed. That would be probably the best like yeah. protest ever. Well, that's why you know what I was actually uh, I wasn't sure what I was watching earlier when I first tuned into the the London protests there, um, and I was like. Uh, there's there was no tension it was like wow this looks like a bunch of people standing around showing up like a protest <laughs> like like an actual yeah it did it there was no there was no marching into the streets and trying to you know you know like ah oh, are we gonna flip that car over no we're not yeah, exactly. you know none of that Police shit car. yeah I've seen I've seen a video where like people in the United States were lighting up a mattress of a homeless guy. Oh Christ! See, and I mean, like, who actually does that? Like, are you protesting against homeless people or are you protesting against the government? Get, make your fucking mind up. You know what I mean? Like, like 
that's gaslighting because obviously that person isn't there for the protest. They're there for another reason. Like that, that it yeah, makes, exactly. and these people got caught. They even got caught at the G20 summit in Toronto. They did it again in, uh, in, in, in Montreal, Quebec, um, at the G8. Uh, this has happened repeatedly and it was always to install, uh, security um i remember because i think i'm pretty sure it was yeah it was in quebec first or was it in uh in the state somewhere i can't remember but anyway because of the lead up to the g20 that is why uh toronto went and they they, they put up uh, these 10 foot uh 10 foot fencings uh, like to basically basically make corridors <coughs> on the city streets and it, and security video cameras to monitor people before the g20 summit and then after the G20 summit, they took down all the fencing and all the, you know, all the, all the barricades and shit, but they left all the cameras. So yeah, it's just like London, England, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, they left all that shit, but of course, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's uh, I mean, it's, it's I also mean, like not the contact tracing is not going to go mm, away, right? But yeah, the provocateurs at the Toronto, I mean, at the Toronto G20, what happened there was, uh. Yeah, there's a little bit of rioting going on there, and they brought in, they brought in, uh, you know, they brought in the, the, the not, not, uh, what do you call them, the, uh, uh, the shields and oh, all that I shit. Well, they also said, uh, you know, the, the, these provocateurs set a couple cars on fire and shit. But guess what? They got caught on camera running through the police line and disappearing. And yeah, and, and all that was left behind was like uh, they, they found boots and, and hoodies and shit like that lying around. This, this has all been documented. I, I don't know where to find it now. I mean, shit, this is just I'm going I'm going on memory myself right now. But I mean, this was all recorded. And, I mean, like, I was just like, yeah, that kind of makes a little bit of sense. But these things do happen. And I mean, cry conspiracy and tinfoil hat and all that shit. But I mean, at the end of the day um does any of this make sense to anybody like you know what i mean like just bizarre yeah i mean this so much does not make sense so much to, does not add up with with all the things that are happening no well i mean shit ah uh, like i said this is the uh this is that uh, that 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 last moment in Empire Strikes Back, you know, where the sad the sad ballad version of the uh, Star Wars track is playing, and Luke communicates to Leia with his telepathy, with his Jedi telepathy, and then she's like, "Turn turn the ship around. We've got to get Luke." You know, I don't know if she said that. I can't remember why, but yeah. But anyway. That's it. Yeah. Then, then he gets his, then he gets his robot hand. He gets his robot hand, and then we cut the credits. Best ending ever. Yes, yes. It's definitely the best Star Wars episode, in my opinion. Yeah, me too. It's my favorite. But uh, like I said, like I said, uh, the uh, story's not over. I mean. There's still time left. I don't know how much we got. I don't know. I don't know when the next round is going to kick off. But if the next round does kick off before more people uh, decide to uh, do something about this, um, uh, we will lose the next battle too, and then we'll probably lose a war. If we lose the next round, we're done. Yeah, yeah, and you know all of the things that uh, they the people are out for now. You know the the NWO wants them riding. Yeah, they want, want, them, they, want them riding. they want you to react because if you react, they're going to react. And guess what? They have more toys than they do. So it's, uh, yeah. Exactly. And so just another thing that I wanted to touch upon with you. The, like, yeah. what do you think that uh, the, basically, like, the, the, the theory that the police and national guards, they're never going to fire on Americans? Well, like, well, unfortunately... And get this, um, Obama passed, well, Obama, I think it was actually, I think it was an executive order that uh, basically permitted under certain circumstances to even drone attack their own 
people on American soil. So I don't know. You know, um, at the end of the day, I think all of these things are just uh, small bits and pieces of a of a tool chest that uh, that they're going to utilize. But I ha- I know I know the way. I I have an idea of a way. Anyway, I don't know how well it would work. But the only way that I can conceive of to beat them uh, is to just not buy their shit. You'll be surprised how quick they'll turn around and change policies when you stop buying what they're what they're selling you. And because uh, you got to remember, they don't care about the money. They care about the power and they care about eugenics. They want to basically be uh, rid of the, well, the not them, I guess you could say. Um, but what you can do, though, is just stop buying their shit because the money is the cattle feed that drives their, their labor force. Their labor force are the ones that they bribe and pay and, 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 and offer things to. If you take that away, they won't be able to do anything and they won't, they won't be able to, to control people with the money. If you control where they get their money from, then you also control what they're capable of doing. And that's the only way that I can see right now. And maybe they're trying to change that. Maybe they're going to change, but we have to change with it. That's all. We have to evolve. We have to adapt. We have to overcome. Semper paratus. Always prepared. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I agree with that. With, uh, and also, like, imagine if, like, everybody stuff on Amazon would just, like, uh, go off and actually buy from their websites. Imagine what kind of impact that would have on... Imagine if people just stop buying stuff from 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 Amazon altogether and stop going to the yeah, chain yeah. stores, you know? Exactly, exactly, man. Exactly. And I my, would be really mad. Actually. I remember when I was about, I don't know, I was very young. It's a very, very fragmented memory, but my grandmother used to take me camping when I was like about three years old and teach me survival training. She's she's German, so I have, you know, I... Have, I I hold I hold the Ger- the German mentality uh, close to heart, and besides, that makes me a quarter German also. But <laughs> but I uh, I, uh, I remember seeing her washing. She was washing plastic shopping bags. I, I'll never forget it. And I I I I just have the image of her doing it. I didn't have any mental thought or reference to it when at the time. But thinking back, I just have that image in my mind. And, like, she was a survivalist. I mean, she survived World War II, like, in Germany. Um, her, fir- her first husband was a German Air Force pilot who got shot down and killed over, uh, over Britain. So she decided to get clever and, uh, and marry a British German. Uh, sorry, a British German. A British Air Force pilot. Yeah, a British German. <laughs> yeah, a British German. Yeah, that's funny. But, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, you know, it's just, I mean, interesting history, man. Oh, it's, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. But, but uh, like also, you see that, like, back then, like, uh, obviously, like, there's, like, a thing that says, like, strong men, like, it's, uh, good times, good times create weak men, weak men create bad times, bad times create on men and then like the song uh, like the song goes on and on right in sort of circle right mm-hmm. what do you think about that like time is creating weak men while like bad times create strong men or like humans actually well it, it, it's it's funny it's yeah. funny it's funny irony and it, and it and it really does look good on paper but i mean at the end of the day i think i think people in general are more complex than that but it is it is definitely a funny uh like a, a funny irony, like to, to look at it that way, and it, and it's uh, it, it's fairly accurate. Don't get me wrong; it's fairly accurate. But I think people are a little bit more complex than that, because I, I tend to agree with yeah. People are definitely more complex than that, but like especially right now, because like when you look at how good people have technically had it in the in the Western world, right? Yeah. So there's like no uh, no you know. But you, no, you know, you know what they do to bees, right? Like when uh, when a bee handler is gonna handle his bees, 
he's got like he's got, he, he he gets this uh, device that creates a smoke. And it makes the bees drowsy, so they're kind of stoned, and they they don't really react very quickly, and they you know find you know, they find find it hard to fly. Like, it's basically like getting them all stoned, and like, and you know, if, if the guy just has to go and take a couple of slides of bees out, and just kind of you know maybe uh, you know shake the bees off, scrape out some of the wax or whatever, and, and the honey and that, and then you know. Put, you know, put the whole thing back together. It's just, it's just long enough so that the bee handler can do his job. I kind of feel like that's what's happening right now. I just, I just lost you. Oh, did you? What, what did? What was the last thing you heard? Um, I kind of feel like it's happening. That's the last thing. Oh, because I stopped talking. I said I feel like that's happening oh, now. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That's why you didn't hear anything because I stopped. <laughs> no, it sounded so abrupt. Yeah, I, I was just I was just looking for a reaction, but I, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, though, I mean, like that's that's pretty much what's happening now. I mean, people are getting, um, and, and because of the the diversity of people and the different avenues of A religion, B race, you know, all 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 the big ones, you know, I'm not even going to go through the list, but everybody else has imagined it enough to to know that there's all these different categories of people. Um they're getting hit with their own special brand of marketing from the source. You know what I mean? And it's oh, yeah, yeah. I, and it, it's it's gaslighting everybody to a degree, you know. Um exactly you know with all of the personalized feeds that you get on your social media even like youtube algorithms so they were gonna like yeah. recommend videos that are just gonna pull uh people deeper into their sort of paradigm without any thing to question right and yeah. to actually say hey wait a minute maybe maybe you know this left right thing is you know just a, a farce essentially yeah well, you know, I, I uh, that whole left-right thing. I mean, it's uh, again, see that that that's that's more division. Like it's red, it's blue; it's left, it's right. You know what I mean? It's uh, uh yeah. Yeah. It, and it and it's retarded because you know I'm liberal about some things and I'm conservative about other things. Um, I'm democratic yeah. about some things and. And other things, this is a, a robbertocracy. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> or 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 <laughs> it's a republic of Robert. You know what I mean? Like, it, it depends on yeah, what it yeah, is. Yeah. It, depends, it depends on which issues, right? So. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. some things that just don't fly, and there's some things I'm willing to work work with. Like, uh, one thing right now, like, I mean, and this has just grown with my age, but I mean, I am an anarchist. I don't believe in government. I I. I, I won't I won't obey, you know what I mean? Like I just won't. Like so I mean take it with a grain of salt. I mean but I've never voted. I just never did believe in it. I got very very discouraged about my government when I was in the military and the fourth year I was in there, I got out, I left and just I wanted I did not want to play ball and you know and, and the only time I do is when they force me to, like when I have to do this uh, to get, you know, a, a passport, or if I have to do that uh, because I, you know, my, I lost my job, I have to get unemployment just while I look for a new one, just so I don't lose my house. You know what I mean? Or, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's those kinds of things, and it's like they put you into these positions where you have to question yourself. I don't believe in welfare. I don't believe in minimum wage. I, I. I, I the redistribution of wealth, if it was eliminated in the first place, that would create proper capitalism. But because the government sticks its nose into capitalism, then now capitalism is flawed because now they're playing favorites. So, I mean, like, the whole thing is poison, and so is democracy. Like, yeah, yeah. And, like you can see the playing favorites part is particularly, like, with, aren't they, like, Silicon Valley, like, Google and, yeah. and like, all of the big corporations that basically have yeah. a... The monopoly on the on the you know search engines. Yeah. See, I, I mean, mean Google is a monopoly. Absolutely. Oh, I mean, well, they they tried to own the alphabet, didn't they? You know, they got the company called Alphabet. <laughs> I think it's called Alphabet. The registered company that the corporation that owns Google now is called Alphabet. I think. Yeah. 
Yeah. Didn't, I didn't. I didn't hear that. Here, let, let me see. I'll I'll look that up here. Um, I'll use DuckDuckGo to look up Google. How's that? It's <laughs> a good one. It's a good uh, one. I, I use sometimes uh, a Russian uh, site called Yandex. It actually gives you also good searches. Yeah, Alphabet Inc. Here, here we go. Here we got. Yeah, Google redirects here for the company formerly traded under the ticker symbol. See Google. Alphabet Inc. is an American multinational conglomerate headquartered in Mountain View, California. It was created through a restructuring of Google on October 2nd, 2015. Yeah. Alphabet is the world's fourth largest technology company by revenue and one of the world's most valuable companies. Yeah, there you go. Alphabet Inc. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know that, man. Yeah. Right. Yeah, uh, I knew that, like, uh, really this guy was, help, was helping develop a lot of these early on stages of, uh, you know, all this interconnectedness that we have. Right. And services were involved in developing all this. Well, the creators of Google... Um are they're 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 laughing all the way to the bank maybe one maybe they're dead from heroin i haven't looked into them i don't even know who they are but i'm just saying whoever they are they're laughing from the money they made at the time that they yeah. sold google i mean yeah. google became basically a, a government uh construct a utensil i guess you could say even if it's exactly. e yeah e even if it has like you know real people working for them because uh there's a speculation that it's just all bots <laughs> but <laughs> no, uh, actually like uh yeah there's definitely real real people working <laughs> in google actually i've lived in two cities where we actually had a google headquarters so no i i know i know that there's real people yeah kitchener waterloo uh when i was in ontario uh it's hard to believe that we, had, we had a we had a google headquarters there a big yeah yeah, it was a building. They have they bought. I think they used to make uh, either leather products or beer, one of the two. But it's it was an old factory building that they converted into this futuristic kind of thing. It was uh, Kitchen Waterloo. I, I see if I can find a picture of this thing. Hang on, Kitchen Waterloo, Google headquarters. Yeah, Waterloo. <clears throat> Google careers. What image? Yeah, yeah. This way, it was a it was a leather it was a leather place. So they they basically turned this into the and then they moved across the street, which is that place. I can't see your screen. I think. Oh wait, hang on. I should I should probably share it then so you can see it. Where's my manners? Wrong. <laughs> uh, oh, I gotta find my Twitch. I mean, my Discord. You know what I mean. Here. Green. <laughs> Boom, bada bing. Wait, that's not it. Change that. There you go. So yeah, so that's 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 the modern building. This one is the building that they were in prior, and it was the, uh, the Lang Tanning Company. It used to be a, like a place that uh, tanned leather. It was a leather shop back mm -hmm. like from like the early 1900s. Oh, I see, I see. And, and since we were on the topic of Germans, um, actually Kitchener Waterloo used to be called Old Berlin because about 20 miles oh. north, yeah, it was because 20 miles north was where we had the Canadian POW camp for German prisoners of war. So the ones that the ones that got the ones that got exonerated and started families did it in Old Berlin, and then they actually retitled the uh, the the town to uh, to Kitchener. Some went down to Waterloo, uh, Guelph, and Cambridge are nearby as well. But they eventually amalgamated uh, Kitchener and Waterloo to become well Kitchener Waterloo. Anyway, and it's very very German. There's lots of Germans in Kitchener Waterloo. <laughs> That's how I. That's how. That's how I know them so well. That's why you know when I say I. I <laughs> like very unique for for Canada, I'm sure. Like uh, yeah. there wasn't that many POW camps around. 
Well, no, but we were feared. We were feared uh, immensely in World War Two and World War One. Like uh, Canadians were, we were monsters. They were good soldiers. They were great soldiers. Yeah, we also had some dark bits too. I mean, there's a, there's a couple cases I looked into, and there's one case. Um, I, I don't remember the specifics, but there's one case where uh, basically, I guess uh, somebody was caught uh, feeding either information to uh, to the Germans, like to the Nazis, and uh, mm-hmm. what ended up happening was instead of just going after that one guy. They basically burnt down the entire town. Like, yeah, no, when they get a little bit crazy, they get crazy. And you know what? History did repeat itself because uh, Canadian troops did the same thing in Somalia, too. They, uh, they, they basically interrogated a kid until, well, they basically beat him to death and he died. And uh, that was number four RCR, which is a Royal Canadian. Yeah, they basically shut down the whole uh, regiment. Um, that, that, that regiment was disbanded. Because of political, uh, you know, backlash, what have you, yeah. But uh, yeah, no. Uh, thing is, though, I mean, when it comes down to that kind of shit, I mean, um, anybody. Well, I shouldn't say anybody. I should say anyone's country could be susceptible to that kind of thing because you know you're always gonna have you're always gonna have a nutbag in every group. And like I said, when you when they get gaslit. It becomes an emotional uh, tipping point, and uh, you get that mob mentality going. And you know what? It's psychologically proven over and over and over again. So, oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's uh, you, you yeah. see it pop up all, all the time, all the time. Yeah. So, I didn't want to interrupt you. <laughs> you wanted to finish your thought. No, no, I'm, I'm fine. It's weird because I think I'm cutting you off. It sounds like when I speak, it kind of cuts your mic out or something. No, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah. I just, I just don't know how it sounds on the recording. That's all. Yeah. But I will have to go back to sleep in like 10 minutes. Yeah, you know what? I was going to be uh, calling it quits. Actually, when I that last time I mentioned The Empire Strikes Back, I was trying to uh, get to the denouement of this whole thing. Um, <laughs> but I digress. Um, do you have any words, man? Do you have anything you want to say to to the listeners there? Uh, I mean, it was this was a weird this was a weird talk today, but I mean, it was kind of spontaneous and out of the blue. I love it uh, so spontaneous and I think we can keep on doing this and it's perfect for me in the morning hours for you in the evening hours or like for me in the early evening hours and for you in the afternoon hours so we'll make it work with the time zones and we'll stay in touch and I'll be talking a lot more about interesting stuff that's happening well I appreciate that man and you know what Uh, it's always a pleasure I uh yeah I I wasn't sure if I was going to go on I was uh, but, but before we before we went live, uh, just so I could tell the listeners, uh, I was uh, a job that I thought would take me about three or four hours to complete. Uh, I haven't completed it yet, and it was about sixteen. So, and I don't want my I don't I don't want my client to hear me say that. So, shh, because I I was I was too busy doing my own shit to work on their shit. Mind you, I worked on their shit too, but I kind of did it in between. Uh, uh, loading screens, if you know what I mean. So anyway, um, yeah, I should be focusing because, uh, yeah. <laughs> but my bad. I mean, crap. You know, here I am. Still, I'm still not doing it because <laughs> I'm doing this. But um, it was a de- definite pleasure. And uh, listen, guys, everyone, guys and gals, everybody out there, you guys, just take just just take it easy and be safe. Don't uh, don't do anything I wouldn't do. Which isn't a whole lot, really. Stay cool. <laughs> but stay um, cool for sure. Um, for sure. Don't uh, don't get gaslit. Don't buy into the the, the BS. Like just use a yeah, rational don't. mind and and yeah. and think and think. Just think. And don't, don't watch CNN, right? Oh damn, right. Um, no, unless 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 you want to learn how to uh, manipulate people and uh, not actually tell news. But. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, it's been great. Well, 
yeah well i enjoyed myself here and uh well enjoy talking to you man and uh well i guess without further ado we'll have to cut this short and uh well mr internet and people of the listening class <laughs> what do you what do you got to say there mister uh, i was just gonna say goodbye to everyone as well and you know, in the next one and i'm looking forward to it because there's a array of topics that we can discuss all day long agreed with that bye bye